Uh, I'm here with Jaime Miro and we're here to cover Panasonic's breakthrough in both VR and AR environments. So, Jaime, let's cover the differences. What are the key differences between VR and AR environments? So for virtual reality, we are typically replacing a green color in the background by a virtual graphic. And augmented reality, uh, we are just inserting some virtual objects into a real uh, stage, into a real situation. Okay, and where will we see these environments be typically used? So typically VR is being used for broadcast studios because we need a dedicated space with a very stable lighting condition and camera settings. So it's difficult to, to do this in a, in a outside, outside of a broadcast studio. But now with the possibilities of augmented reality, we can bring this virtuality into a real uh, stage, into a real situation. It means a music uh, performance and a live concert or, or a sports venue in the half time of a, of a football match or a, any live uh, event uh, situation. So that's why I think AR is becoming so popular right now. So can we mix the two? Can VR and AR be used simultaneously? Yeah, in fact, we are using right now. Yeah. So we are sitting in a virtual studio by replacing our green set, but also we have this uh, virtual UE150 on the table with us. So this is uh, AR in a VR situation. So how does Panasonic technology work in these sort of environments? So at this moment we are offering a wide range of camera and robotic systems compatible with all these applications. Be compatible means to provide tracking position data in a synchronized way. So starting with the UE150, that's the first PTZ capable of providing this data. And not only the camera, the camera can be mounted on uh, dollies, on uh, motorized uh, uh, columns uh, with a tuning system. And also that combination is compatible with AR and VR. We can also use our pantil head and uh, the robotic arm, which is one of the cameras that we are using for this video. All these systems are compatible with this kind of uh, 3D engines. And you, you mentioned that uh, the UE150 works with the, A, uh, with the 3D protocol. What does, that mean, what does that mean for us? Can it, can it, does it mean we can use it with, with other engines? Yeah, the, the good news here is that uh, we are using a standard protocol in the industry. It's named 3D. It can be used over IP network or also via serial. So it means that you don't need any additional development to use all these uh, solutions that I was speaking about. So it's directly compatible with all the th 3D engines uh, available right now in the market, like Brainstorm or Zero Density, but also Future Group, Wizard D, Avid. So that, the systems are uh, directly compatible with all that. Cool. Thank you for your time, Jaime. And if you've got any questions, then please feel free to comment on the video below. Thanks for watching.